we're gonna do is kind of tack it to the side of the car here. We're gonna actually utilize a few tools in this. This is a, um, a smaller bumper pole made by Auto Skins. First attempt, we're gonna try it with this because this shape of the light, um, I'm feeling that I'm really gonna need to pull a lot of horizontal stretch, or not a lot, but I'm gonna need a tool that'll pull even horizontal stretch this way so that we can comfortably conform around that, uh, that curve and so we don't have to stretch the material up afterwards. Uh, we should just be able to kind of hold the material off the light, heat it, and it'll shrink down and wrap this part for us. So we should have to do no work right here. Uh, this should be the easiest part of the car to wrap. So first thing, let's go ahead and cut off the, the right amount of material. Let's see. You can probably, let's pick it up and we can see, you can see the back of light wrap is gridded here. Have to help with the measuring process. I think we'll be good. About there. How are we doing on horizontal up and down? Up and down is good. You can see I have tape around here. This is gonna help the vinyl slide into this channel when we're finishing the install. Um, I'm only gonna need a couple of inches extra down here. Most of the extra material is gonna be at the top. Uh, I do wanna leave a little bit because as I stretch it, the vinyl is gonna kind of hourglass and I don't want it to hourglass up into the light and have me pull down then. So the first thing, we're gonna just kind of get it registered onto the car and where we think the right spot is gonna be. Um, just past, so maybe right there, that'll give us a couple of inches on the car. You can keep holding up just like you are there with that hand. I'm gonna go ahead and free the rest of the vinyl. You want me to pull this, untack this? Nope, that can okay. stay tacked right now. Let's see. Yeah, you can go ahead and flip that on. I'm gonna get the material applied to this bumper pole and give it a little bit of a wrap around. You don't wanna apply it on the front face so it pops off. You just kinda of wrap it around the pole, make sure there's no weird tension at all on the material and that it's installed flat. Take the heat gun now, so you'll just keep that on the car. If you don't have a second set of hands, maybe just take a piece of painter's tape and give yourself a nice little edge right there or use heat and just really seal the material down. So you'll see the material's off of most of the light. I'm gonna apply heat where the material is gonna come down onto that corner, which is about right here on that left logo. So that's gonna be where I concentrate the heat, but I am gonna get it all the way from the top to the bottom because we want this material to stretch. Now already, I can feel the material stretching just with me barely pulling on it. So I know I'm getting good heat on the vinyl here. These are little squares that are printed on the vinyl, so when we see those become rectangles, we know we have too much stretch on it. You can see here we're getting a little bit more. We've probably now added two to three inches to this material. But that should be about all the stretch that we're going to need to be able to wrap this light properly. So I'm going to flip that off. And now you go ahead and touch the top and just barely put enough tension on it to help glass it out. He's not pulling at all. If you see him on that video, he's just helping hold that up. Now I'm going to come around the light. get myself right here. Now, that amount of stretch, before I go too much further, let's see what kind of memory effect we get right here. Let's see if this is gonna be enough stretch to take care of this corner, or if we're gonna need to apply more, because we can still do that right now. So again, taking the heat gun, I'm just gonna activate the memory of the vinyl. So we don't quite have enough here to do that. We're still gonna have to apply some stretch. So, let's pull it back off, it's about right there, keep it on the car. I'm going to go back this time without a bumper pull, even though it would probably be easier with it, and I'm going to really put some pull on the vinyl. I'm trying to warm up the room in here right now, it's low 70s, uh, 75, 76 would just be a sweet spot. So now we've deformed the vinyl quite a bit. You can see our squares have turned into rectangles in some areas. So we know that there's definitely some tension right there. We've got some lines moving up the light this direction. So I'm gonna get myself right to that corner. I know I'm gonna fly it fine. I'm gonna go back, look at the vinyl pulling itself back. See how resilient this product is. Go 
go ahead and get more stretch now. We're gonna come back and do this with a different film afterwards. This is just for visual purposes for the camera. But now look how much stretch we put on this film. These rectangles are easily now 1.5 um, times their length that way. If this is one, that's now 1.5. Let's see how much the memory effect helps us wrap the top of this light now. Hold this up. Yeah, we can just barely hold it off the car. It's all, it's all we really should have to do. See, the vinyl actually pull itself down onto the light. And now with just the most minor stretch there, we actually get the film to close down. You can see here, look, this is much more square, one to one, than it is right here where it's one to 1.5. So we've actually shrunk the material down and it's holding on right here. Um, this tension right here is pulling this direction. If it shrinks, all it's gonna do is hold the light tighter. So this tension we don't have to worry about. Um, this is proper installation. This is where you want the tension to be. You want it to be somewhere where it can hug. You don't want it to be at the edges. So once we deal with this area here on the final install, then I'm gonna start to lift the vinyl off and shrink it around this edge. And really, uh, we should get a nicer pattern here. Let's go ahead and just kind of finish this out so we can see what that pattern looks like. I'm gonna try to let it shrink if it will anymore. So most people tinting this light are gonna have failures right here. And it's gonna be because they're gonna have vinyl pull back. And it's gonna pull back because this stretching did not take place. So we've got a nice 40 or 90 degree turn right there. We're gonna push the vinyl right up into that and that will be where we cut. There's no reason to follow that piece of plastic straight up. That's just gonna be a really harsh angle and uh, give the vinyl one more place where it could potentially fail when that won't matter when the trunk is closed. So now, let's do what we can right here. I'm gonna free this off of the light. There's a couple of wrinkles there. I'm gonna kind of smooth those out. I always pull the vinyl up to where I have a nice, no wrinkle edge. Uh, that's when I'm gonna start applying heat and shrinking it. So you can see how much the vinyl shrunk right there. Well, what I'm gonna do is put just enough stretch on it to keep these little lines from actually being visible in the final product. So I'm evening out that stretch this way and that way. So I have lines going this direction. If I pull down and this way, I'm gonna smooth all those out. Now I can just rub those, those will be gone. Light wrap is very good at not showing adhesive lines, except for light smoke. Light smoke, just with the little amount of pigmentation it has, is a little more prone. So I'm not worried about any of that being visible. So we now have this face down. You can see we still have a lot of those um, lines appearing as rectangles right here. So there's still quite a bit of tension. I've got a lot of fingers right here. So we're actually gonna push the material off of the light just a little bit. It's holding great. Heat this up. And I have a little bit about a, a half of an inch of the light that, that turns back into this void. And over that half inch, I'm gonna kind of seal the deal here, lock the edge down. And disperse that tension. So you can see now, without putting heat on the vinyl, I know it was just relaxed. So I can pull with no heat, and there's very little chance that you're gonna overstretch the vinyl if you're not using heat. It would have to be 80 degrees outside. You'd have to have a lot of stretch to be able to overstretch vinyl with no heat. Let's go ahead. We will need a little bit. I'm gonna shrink it back here. Perfect. And now get it around that curve. Pulling it 
hooking the vinyl around the side. Now I'm looking for the vinyl to move when I shrink it. I got a little bit of movement, but none of those lines came back over onto the film, which is exactly what we want. Now we have a little bit of weirdness right here. Um, this is actually gonna be a little bit complicated to get rid of because we're already as far along on this insole as we are. Then we have some lines here, which we'll wanna deal with. And let's just see if I can get this. There we go. So it pops the light wrap off of the light. You can see clearly past where we had any wrinkles. Actually, I've got one more. Can't see it, it's in that print. So now I'm clearly past the wrinkles. You can see all the deformations where my fingers were. So I just have my hand here under the film to pull it off of the car. Now I'm gonna heat it. And you can see it already shrink up and just take the shape of that light. Look, we just let it go. And now we have that part perfectly installed. None of those wrinkles are here. And that's done. So that's using the memory effect to wrap the shape for you. Now we have some wrinkles going this direction. Again, with the memory effect, let's see if we can pop this off. It's a little chilly. This is a dangerous time because it's a little chilly the way it's popping off of the car. I don't want to rip it. You would not want to do this in any 60 degree weather, no matter if it's 69. You want it to be in the 70s to do that right there so you don't pop and tear the material. Now, yeah, I'll have your help me kind of come off of the car at a pretty harsh angle. There you go. We're going to kind of shrink that up and I'm going to pull up a little bit with my hand here. Then I'm going to reach back down and pull down as well. Let's pull off because we have a little bit more that's there. Now while I'm holding the material. Let's see. I really should have dealt with that before we went this far into this section. So hopefully you won't get yourself into this situation. Um, I was telling them I would have actually finished this area before getting this far into the install. So now we're kind of behind the eight ball and trying to fix a mistake. But it should be possible with this film. It's just going to take some smart stretching. Oh, yep. Yeah. Let's see. Let's pull that out. Right there. And again, if you look right here, we have tension up top at the area where we always almost are already finished, but our tension's all shooting this direction. So that's not a problem. All we want to do is apply heat to that, and we should get that same shrinking effect. Yeah. And that wrapped just right down. Now we go all the way up to the light, to the top, come around the edge. You can see that's how we form the light wrap to this shape. Um, it wasn't the most perfect install. Typically we try to do that in one pull and not have to keep going back and forth. But just to show you, if you do get yourself in that situation, you can recover from it. Um, you can see the pattern distortion in this grid, which means if you were using carbon fiber or metal, you would see all this distortion. So this would not, I would not call this a satisfactory carbon fiber or metal or honeycomb install at all. Uh, I would take this off and redo this. Um, if this were done in stealth or gloss or the um, star power film, I think you're going to be just fine because none of this tension is enough to break the install. Uh, it just would break the look in the uh, textured films. So I'm going to go and pull the camera down and just show you all the edges here and how we were uh, able to take care of that and what little wrinkles. Okay, have. so this is the finished install here. Um, as I was saying, this would not be an acceptable install in carbon fiber or metal or honeycomb because you would see all of those pattern variations. You're gonna need to be able to install this in one foul stretch, um, but in stealth or gloss, this would most likely be an acceptable finish. 
Um, but take a look at the top here. You can see we have no wrinkles, not even up into the edge here that we're dealing with. So you can see this is the tension-free area of the light, and that's the number one problem area people are going to have. You can also see here where the light turns back and goes towards the vehicle. We have a clean edge. We've got a clean edge at the bottom, and uh, we have a clean edge along this side as well. So final notes, not, not the most... Um, efficient install. We had to go back and forth a couple of times. I wouldn't typically do that. Um, but again, I was trying to go forward to back. Typically, I go back to forward. I'll probably do that next to see how that works. Um, but if you do get yourself in that situation, you can save it. You just can't save it with the effects. So if you are, um, if you're new to tinting taillights and these type of curves kind of scare you, um, stick with the gloss and the stealth films for right now. Um, and because especially the other films are laminated, so they're going to even want to pull back more, um, but there okay, you so try two. This is what I would have initially done, and that's going to be start from here and work our way this direction. So we're going to try that. Uh, we're still going to use the bumper pole this time. Yeah. One sec before you start sticking that on the car. Let me get this done because it'll be, be a little easier. Bit easier. Yeah. Yeah. The bumper pulls are a little bit too short for the vinyl. It's a little bit annoying, um, but they still work wonders. Okay, so what you're gonna do is just kind of try to get it connected to the car there, just past the light. What are you, about one inch past the light, you think? Uh, inch and a half. Inch and a, a half? A bit longer. Okay. Yeah. This should be good. So that's, that's tacked in right there. That's tacked in, so Sean's gonna hold that onto the car. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing I did before, which is just apply stretch to this. Try not to stand in front of the camera. The, the secret sauce here is just heat the entire piece of vinyl. You want it stretched evenly. I'm really getting good stretch on it this time. I probably already added four inches to the vinyl. You can probably see it hourglassing on the camera. From here, I'm just gonna swing around, start getting in a time, just barely pick that up. That's right. So we've got it now applied to the back face of the light, period. I'm gonna stop just right now, grab my squeegee. It's so glassed out, my squeegee technique can actually be pretty rotten because um, there's no wrinkles that can potentially happen. So I'm gonna stop right where we're at. I'm gonna put some more heat on it, concentrating on this area and get some of this part here shrunk back in. Again, now I'm gonna put heat here so that this part starts to shrink. I'm letting it shrink up. I'm gonna apply heat here. Now I'm gonna start to pull. Don't pull up necessarily with your holding. left hand. Yeah. Do you need to hold it there? Yeah, might as well. Can't hurt. It's just going to keep you from accidentally pulling. Bam. Take a look at that. Okay. So, this install. This is much better than last time. Second yep, so you, can, you can really see here the way the light wrap is, um, is stretched. Look how even all the rectangles are. We don't have any lines doing any wavy motions this time. Let's see if we have enough memory effect to shrink this back down onto the light. I got to about a quarter of an inch where I want the tint to stop on the light and I am gonna have to put just a tiny bit of stretch on it to make sure that I can get the rest of the way even um, without any tension. I don't think that's gonna be too much, but I will know by doing it. So I'm gonna attempt it here. I'm putting just enough, I'm holding the vinyl so that it doesn't have any wrinkles. Come 
back. Make sure this is applied. Go ahead and hit that with heat just a tiny bit, just in case it fails. Go ahead and shrink that up, apply it to the light. And I'll need a little bit more heat right there. that out of the way and now let's go ahead and put a little bit more heat right there letting it shrink and after it shrunk I'm just kind of using the hard card part of the squeegee to roll it down into that corner where I'm gonna make my cut I don't think we have too much tension right here that we're worried about um, I think this is gonna be okay I could put I could have put more stretch on it horizontally when we started this that would have helped with that if you will put a little bit of heat right here that's all I need right there I'm not pulling any stretch just smoothing out the vinyl relaxing it So now this time we are applied onto the light just like we were last. And you can see our stretch again is going this direction and that's okay because this is basically the point of a triangle going like this and all the tension focused on that point is only gonna grab the light harder. As long as your tension is evened out as we get closer to the edges and the edges are locked, we're gonna be fine. This is a perfect example of that. You can see we have quite the rectangular shape here. By the time we get to the edge, we're back to our square. So we know this final is under no tension here, which means this edge is gonna hold on. And so this has nowhere to shrink other than just holding onto the light harder. This is totally good. This is good tension management right here. Now here we do have a lot of rectangular shapes that are really close to our edge. So we're gonna go ahead and shrink that and kind of relax it. Once we get all the way up here to the front again, look, we start getting back to our square shape. So we're getting all of that tension. It's, it's going away as we get closer here. This is nice. I'm gonna have to pull this up though because I wanna adjust this area. I'm gonna pull it just a little bit. This is why we have tape. Pull up just about a half of an inch onto the light. Now that we have that, go ahead and apply a little bit of heat. I'm gonna let that shrink up, you're good, no more heat needed. I'm just gonna let that shrink and apply a little bit of a shimmy. You see, I just kind of shimmy the vinyl, kind of spreads the tension out. It didn't shrink very much, we still have a lot of a rectangular shape, but, but I'm telling you right now that's not enough to worry about. I could feel the tension, that is a nice edge. Now we'll just kind of clean this back up. Go ahead and hold the heat down about six inches away. There you go. And just enough to get those three nice squares again. That is a successful tint. I would say that this method, going from this direction forward, is a more successful method than going from the front back. Why is that? I think one reason is we get to make this corner faster. The fact that we make this corner faster led to almost no wrinkles and no weird lines here on this face. When we went from here forward, we had to clear this big gap before we could start swinging. Now, the fact that we had to clear that big gap led to all these little wrinkles right in the middle. I could have alleviated that with a third person pulling up and down right here while we made the turn, but now we have three people working on one light. That just seems a little bit excessive, even if it is done for a minute, uh, especially when you can go the other direction and not need that. So this 
is a really good install. This is gonna be the method that we use when we do apply the final finish, which we'll do next. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove the camera and take you around the edges and show you what all of the different um, grid looks like. So I did have a question yeah. since we're here on camera. Yeah. Um, as far as uh, somebody who is inexperienced mm -hmm. that was doing a install of honeycomb, would you recommend that on this tail light because of the... Oh yeah, absolutely. Honeycomb is gonna make this, uh, this is gonna be no problem. Um, one thing about the honeycomb material is it's laminated, so it's gonna be a lot thicker. You're gonna have a lot more control over that heat and that initial stretch process um, because it is thicker. So it's not gonna wanna kind of just collapse in on itself as bad. Now, because it's laminated, this amount of stretch that I put up here may be too much for the honeycomb. So you may need to really get that stretch down. You need to be comfortable with the material. Um, there's no reason why you couldn't take like 3M gloss black material and practice this light. It's a lot less expensive than light wrap and you can practice using a cast material and learning the memory effect um, so that you can get to this point with the light wrap. Uh, we will go ahead and try these with, a lamp, with an FX material too so we can see the difference um, there. But let's go around the edges now. So you can see, let me go back to 1X facing in. See, we have a clean edge all the way there, clean all the way. It's clean up. You can see that real hard turn now where we were gonna make the cut. I don't think that's gonna be too much tension. As you can see, when we look up, these are still really square in shape. So that's nice. We do get a little bit of um, you know, vertical stretch this way, but I don't think it's gonna be too much. We get a nice clean install, wrinkle free around all the edges. That's what it looks like. So we'll go ahead now and put on the, um, put on some effects. Okay, same exact install, 2018 Subaru Forester. This time we're gonna use the carbon FX film so that we can show you what it's like to do it with a laminated film. So again, this is twice as thick as what we were just using. You can almost tell just when we remove the backing paper, looking at it, how little it wants to crinkle in on itself. It's a very thick material. So there are a couple things you have to deal with uh, or think about when you're dealing with a multi-layer material like this. One is that the material will heal uh, like a gloss and a satin material. However, there are multiple layers. They heal at different speeds. So, and they also shrink and stretch at slightly different um, uh, variables. So you, you want to still work, at, is, you want to get as much done in one shot as you possibly can. I think that's what I'm trying to say. So he's going to go ahead and tack it on the hatch of the car again, just like we did before. Am I low enough? Um, yeah, you're low enough, Plenty. You can't see. We've got the tape right there, and he's about one inch below the tape, so we have about three inches below the light, and we've got about the, about eight inches, nine inches here on top. It's gonna take a little bit more heat to get this to stretch, but you can see maybe the, the film will start to form little wrinkles. They're much less defined because it is a, an FX film. However, it forms little wrinkles as I'm heating, and then those wrinkles eventually flatten out and it becomes really smooth. That's when it's perfect for stretching. So I'm starting to get a lot of stretch on the material here. I want this in one shot. I'd much rather have a little bit too much stretch and then be able to shrink it out than not have done enough. So again, right to that corner, done. Coming back with a little bit more. And I'm focusing it right on that corner. So if I have a little bit of a difference in the direction of the carbon, you won't notice because the light's changing direction right there. This is a bit interesting. I'm trying to stretch right here, and I'm also gonna wanna shrink closer to the front of the car so that I can start to, to shrink these edges. So there we go. I'll go ahead. Now I don't have my squeeze. Yeah, I do, it's in this pocket. I got it. So I got a little bit of a wrinkle there. I haven't put a lot of pressure on it, so I'm still in a position where I can just pull it right off like that, apply a little bit of heat to it, get it to shrink up. Now, Sean is gonna kind of hold the film because we're gonna use that memory effect. We don't wanna waste it right here. You can see, I'm actually going for a little bit more stretch. So I can kind of see 
what we're gonna be dealing with here at the top of this light. I think that's gonna be good. I'm just gonna hold that right there. Okay. That actually looks like it applied so much faster than the previous material. There's a lot of, yes, and I'm being very careful with it. And now this is my third time doing the exact same light. I'm starting to learn exactly how much I need to stretch out. Mm -hmm. It's kind of why we're shooting the videos repeatedly like this too, so you get to see the differences film after, you know, for the different types of film and also just how I'm getting used to it. So I'm gonna use that shrinking effect here. You can see we have tension lines that shoot just like this. That's fantastic. That shows me that all the tension's there. This is not as, this isn't as stretched as I would want it to be. Typically I'd wanna see lines also shooting this way and I just don't see much lines here at all. So I don't know how much sh shrinking we're gonna get from this section, but I think we're gonna get a good amount here. So with this film, I should be able to hold it all. You can put your hand there, let's see. So now with it not shrinking to shape as much as I would like, notice that I am pulling a little bit more than normal. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this as much as possible in one go. See, I'm spreading the tension out away from that corner. So right here, we're getting all the way up, we're almost there. So I'll pull this forward now. Get everything out of your way that you possibly can with working with an effects material. You wanna make your job as easy as possible. You want the vinyl to do as much of the work as it possibly can. right there. I'm going to try to spread that tension out again that way and this way. Thinking about every squeegee stroke and what I'm doing with the vinyl and the tension. So if you will, come get me a little bit of heat right on this edge here. Trying to get a clean install right here. So you're going to get some variation in your sheen and in your direction of your carbon fiber. You're wrapping a complex shape. There's no way around that. It's just managing it and making it look as good as possible. What you don't want to have, like I'll show you the stretch here in a minute. And I have one little bitty area that looks different than the rest, but it's just one solid area. I don't want to get in a position where I have a ton of wrinkles down here in the corner and we're heating and we're pulling and we're squeezing and we're heating and we're pulling and we're squeezing and we work our way down. Because if you do that in a bunch of different strokes, this area is just going to look botched. It doesn't matter if it's flat or not. You're going to see so many differences in the sheen. Uh, it'll make sense here in just a second when we show you the finished product, if you've never seen that before. Now, we want to check our stretch again on the edges like we did with the other material. Because this is so thick, I'm going to go ahead and cut some of it away. It's just going to make it easier to deal with. There we go. Now, you know, I don't, I want to shrink the edges and lock them down if necessary, but I also don't want to ruin the even finish. So the first thing that we're going to do before we even pull anything up, is I'm going to get this to where it's on the tape only. While I have this on the tape only, you go ahead and put some heat right here in this area. Okay, that's great. And then right here. Look at that, that vinyl barely moved. And if I let this sit off the light, I've got another quarter of an inch that I can wrap there. Well, we've, we've calmed that vinyl down, we shrank it, it's good to go. While it's calm, I'm just gonna see if it will take the shape of that corner. And it does, perfectly. So that's fantastic. You see here, 
The vinyl goes right to the edge, just fine again. So I want to lock that edge down, but at the same time, the tension isn't telling me that it's necessary. So we don't have a crazy amount of fingers forming right here. We have no fingers forming here. So let's just one more time put heat right here in this area. Look at that, it shrunk a tiny bit. So that's good, we'll let that do that. And we can still apply it cleanly down into the edge. So this is gonna be a long-term successful install here of the carbon material. That's how you're gonna install the FX on this light. As you can see, it's no different than any of the other techniques that we use. It's just that the, the more complex the film, the better job I have to do for it to hold on and stay here long-term. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the camera and show you guys what it looks like. So let's take a look here. See this sheen difference right there? That is what I'm talking about, about the stretch. That's very, very minor. You're seeing it in here because we have perfect lighting. So that's the reason that it's so harsh. This would be totally acceptable. You know, nice sheen here. Everything looks nice and even. Uh, 3M's carbon fiber laminate is a little bit wavy. It's not perfectly straight. They actually did that on purpose because this is such a hard effect to control when you're doing something like a full bumper. A little bit of a wave looks better than everything being perfectly straight. So now we get up to the top part of the light. Look here. You can see the tension and the stretch up top. It's not much at all. Look in that harsh corner at the, the tension lines. We've got a little but they're not going past that and onto the shape. So this is gonna be fine. This would be a good FX carbon honeycomb metal install on this vehicle. Okay, so this is gonna be the final install, hopefully, as long as everything goes to plan. Um, this is gonna be our mid stealth material. Again, we're using a non-laminated light wrap. You can already see how much more flexible it is than the carbon. First thing, I'm gonna go ahead and apply it to the pole. Kyle, if you watch this video, you gotta make the bumper poles two inches longer. Super annoying. All right. Go ahead so and tack it down. Here. Same exact thing. We wanna get a little bit further. Go straight to where that, yeah, that dimple okay. is in there. So we have enough to get around that corner nice with no tension. Okay. Five feet behind me, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Here, What's that? Like that? Yeah, we're gonna pull that off. Looks like that. So here we go. Going from top to bottom. Seems to be my best method in getting a nice even stretch all the way across this piece. And I'm really gonna actually focus most of the heat on that area. Sorry if it's getting your hands. Um, but we've been putting not quite enough stretch on that little area there. So I'm putting a little more heat this time. I love this Fusion Tool squeegee. It's just flexible enough to really, really conform to this light and help me apply this film. Jordan, great product. I'm going to be reaching out for more of these. Now I'm gonna go ahead and heat this section again and get that same stretch that I want here. Got some wrinkles there. I even creased them with the squeegee. No reason to be upset about that. It's going to heal right out. You see how great our film is at repositioning now. Because this is a single layered simple film as we would call it in the car wrap world, I can just go ahead and put a little bit of heat right there. That's going to heal right out. Oops. That's all right. There we go. So the main face here, here, all done. 
go back to the top area. And you know, we always deal with this top area now, but I think actually this is a good time to get the hatch out of the way. Okay. Then we can go ahead and start getting into that area. The only thing I'm gonna do here, pull it all off the truck. And I have a couple little wrinkles right here. You can probably see them on camera. So I'm gonna deal with those real fast. Oop, grab that corner. What I'm gonna do first, this is a good lesson before I start heating this, cause I don't, I don't wanna ruin this memory here. I'm just gonna put enough stretch back on the material to make that a nice smooth edge again. Well, I'm gonna have to heat now just a little bit. There we go. You can see I could just kiss the heat and that little, that little mark is gonna go away. It's tiny visible right now, but the sun's gonna take care of that for us. Now just holding this off the car, just apply it. So there's a little bit of tension here, but that's great. That's right in a curve. I'm gonna deal with that. Now we'll pull it off, get the hatch out of the way. and go to dealing with the final edges here. All I'm gonna try to do is get myself a nice smooth edge. Look, we have that tension lines going this direction before, and now there's another tension line going this way. That's what I wanted to see last time. Again, I'm just gonna kind of get these little, the little weird things of tension work out to where it's as smooth as possible at that break point. Here we go with the heat. So I'm going to hand you this heat gun. Now with this one, we are getting a lot of shrink. It's working quite nice. We've got a little contaminant right here on the back. Very colony outside. It's the last thing we want to deal with right now, but it's okay. We can deal with it. I'm going to roll the film back so I can see the contaminant in the glue. Very careful with the knife, you got one shot at this. Pop that little thing out of there. Come back here with the heat. You know, just a kiss of heat right there. Bam, dealt with that contaminant. See, I'm always taking that tension out towards the sides, away from this corner. I'm gonna need a tiny bit more heat right up here. That's great. See, it's still shrinking. It's still grabbing. So that is exactly what we want to see. I'm on the hard side of the squeegee now, and I just kind of—I don't know what you would call that—chop it, guillotine it. I'm, you know, it's like a paper cutter action. I'm not really sliding the whole squeegee as much as I am just kind of closing it. That's fantastic. That top edge looks, looks wonderful. Now I'm gonna need a little bit of heat right here. Bam. Working my way right around that edge. Same thing right here. Boom. everything out. Same with this here. Is this a gasket or a turn in the actual light? I need to go look at that. Okay, that's in the plastic in the lens. So we're going to want to cut past that up where the tape is. So you can tell this is the final install. So I am going to get the vinyl all the way into the creases here. Now we are good. I'll take the heat gun. We're gonna do our first post heat. What I'm looking for here is where the vinyl is gonna shrink on me and to see if any of those lines of tension come up onto the lens or just look super aggressive right at the edge. Let's see here. Now, 
Got a little weird area right here, but I think it's due to the geometry of the light. So I'm gonna put a little relief cut to help the vinyl fold into this nicely. And that's a super harsh angle on the light. So nobody's gonna be able to tell that that tiny little two millimeter squared area is not tinted, but they would tell if the tent failed there and lifted over time. So that's a much better scenario to be in. Again, just making sure that I get this all the way tucked back into that corner. We're gonna go for our first cut. Non-relief cut, I mean. It's a very sharp blade. I'm not putting any tension. I'm just resting it right on top of the vinyl. There we go, get that clean. Make sure that that's nice and sealed, and it is. Here we don't need to wrap around this light and go towards the car at all. Um, it's a really sharp angle. So what I'm gonna do, actually I have a nice gap. I have a nice gap between the clear part of the lens and the black plastic. So I'm gonna use that for my blade. And in order to do that, I'm just gonna need to barely lock this edge. Can I hand you the seat gun, Sean, I'm just saying. This is not a 100% necessary step. You could cut at this top edge and I don't think anyone would be the wiser. Um, if you were using a calendar film, you would want to do this step because the film is gonna shrink over time. There's no way around that. And you're gonna want as much excess film around the light as possible so that you don't shrink past it and it become visible. Uh, if you're using a Vivid Vinyl product, it is calendar, so you will have that problem. If you're dealing in a concave light, there's no way around that. It's just gonna shrink and the install is gonna fail. Same thing here, because I have all this extra bunching of vinyl, I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing that. I'm gonna put a relief cut right here. I'm gonna free a lot of this off. Keep please. paying a lot of attention to this one edge right here because it's on the top of the light. This is where everyone that's standing here is going to see. Um, we don't have to worry quite as much when we get to this area here, but it is very important that we end up with an edge-to-edge -edge OEM look. We want to look like Subaru tinted this light from the factory. Oh yeah, they're looking great. One more time.
And there we go. That's a finished install, trimmed out and everything in the Mid-Stealth Light Wrap. What's our time like? 13, 13 seconds. minutes. Okay, so there you go. 13 minutes. That's also talking, doing a tutorial video and kind of showing you what we were doing. I would assume if this were a customer's car and they were coming in just for the tent, you'd be able to knock this out in 10 to 12 minutes. That puts this car for a set of taillights at 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Um, $100, $120 a pair. Heck, you could probably do more. I know some of your guys' markets are getting $140 to $200 a pair. If this was in the FX film, you should do $200 to $300 a pair. Um, and you can see how, how much money you're making per hour with light wrap as opposed to an alternative. Um, and you're able to get these cool effects like the carbon fiber, the satin, the gloss, and the metal. So there you go, that's one installed. We're gonna show you now what it looks like around all the edges so you can see how clean it is and uh, what you should be striving for. Boop. Other one. No. <laughs> so there we go. Let's take a look at this. I've got a little bit of the vinyl here peeking up. We can get that locked around. Looking at this edge, at this corner, we're great, it's 100% down. Back here towards the vehicle. Look at that. So there you go, very, very happy with that. I did not try to take the vinyl up this ridge. That's just asking for failure. There's no reason to do that. The customer's not gonna see it. You don't need to do it. As a matter of fact, Sean, will you go ahead and close the uh, hatch? Let's take a look at that area up close. Look at that. So from all angles, it looks like it's satin and tinted. And then from way over here, you see a little bit of a reflection. It almost looks like it's just black plastic back there. So that light is fully tinted in the mid stealth. So you can still see red through it. We have very, very bright lighting in here. So outside, this is gonna be a little darker, but you get a really smooth satin finish. I love that finish. Tell me it all. For Can sure, I'm just gonna pretty much leave it on. Leave yep. it here. Okay guys, so we're not really gonna try to talk too much to this one. To explain what I'm doing, I'm just gonna go after this as if it were a customer who came in needed the taillights tinted so we could see how long it would really take us. Okay. This time I'm going to actually just keep this area and get that first We'll fix that. Okay. Huh? Oh, we'll come back to that right there. See those little lines? Yep, that's exactly it. Bam! All right, so assume you have a two-person shop and Sean just jumped off tinning another car to come help me hold it. I'm done with you. You can go back to the job you were doing. Thanks. So just getting a second set of hands to help that long is gonna really help this install. He can be back on another job now. You're back finishing this customer's vehicle. Get that little crease.
a little more comfortable just doing it with the trunk closed at that point because it was the way I practiced the most. Save maybe a minute and a half by putting not putting the tape down, but now it's costing me a little bit of time, not much. Cut on this side. See, I pop a fresh blade, so I don't need to put any pressure on the knife to cut.
All right, John. 7.52. Wait. Eight minutes. <laughs> we'll call it in. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna look and do a light test here. Of course, this is the mid stealth, so there should be a lot of light let through. You're good, it's nothing now. So that's just our daytime running lights, just the lights being on. So clearly visible. And remember, we're in a very, very bright room here. So go ahead and hit brakes. We've got brakes visible here, and you've got that third brake light. This is them all in one shot, as you can see there. All right, you go into your blinker or hazard lights. Clearly see the hazard here. So you're gonna hold uh, an old halogen style bulb and reverse, if you can. Oh yeah, perfect. So there you go. It's all the different um, different light throughput of the mid spoke.